We're on the bottom of Daf Lamed Zayin Amud Bet. We're going into Lamed Chet Amud Aleph. The sugya that we're up to is the Na'anuim. Uh, another shear, a halacha shear, could be focused on the Na'anuim themselves and all the different different combinations of Na'anuim. The light is out. I'm guess I'm gathering. Uh, unfortunately, maybe we should. All right. Oh, that, oh the two lights are. Uh, is there another switch hiding somewhere? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, self-illuminating. A separate halacha shir could be about all different permutations. Suffice it to say, to sum up from last time, the issue is the molich umevi, uh, mali umorid, and that's actually what we do. The molich umevi, though, is expanded for most of us to all four cardinal winds. We have a principle in halacha that we found many times, particularly in Masechet Yuma, that whenever you turn, you should turn to the right. When does this apply? So on the Mizbeach in Yerushalayim, when they'd bring up a korban, they would go up the right side of the Mizbeach, and then they would always face the Mizbeach such that their right side was always going first as they're going around the edge of the Mizbeach. So we learned from this in general, whichever direction you go, you should go to the right. You might recall we had a very long, long discussion about the Kohen Gadol going into the Kodesh Kodashim. He has to go into the Heichal first, so how does he walk? Does he walk straight in? Does he go from the north to the south? Uh, does he, and, and then he turns. What's he passing? What's he going by? And we talked about the idea that he has to move around in a, a basically uh, uh, in, in, in a certain way. He goes in a counterclockwise fashion. Uh, this also obtains in other circumstances. I try sometimes uh, to remind the Shliach Tzibur when they take the Sefer Torah from the Arn Kodesh, let's say in the main Schultz here, true here too, and in, in the Beit Midrash as well. That's why we go specifically off toward the side that the Torah is held on the right shoulder. We go to the right-hand side to the Shulchan, and then we come back the other way afterward with the Sefer Torah. We don't retrace our steps, but we make a circle. That's the same thing to mimic that idea. That's why the Hakafot are that way. That's why Hoshan are that way. It can't go the other way. Davka is supposed to be, your direction should be Kol Pniyosh Tapone, uh, 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 something like that. I'm butchering the formulation, but Chazal have this in Yuma and it obtains here halachically with the Hoshanah as far as most of our minhagim are concerned. There are other minhagim. No, no, it's not about right-handed. Left-handed, it's about about the, the, the right side associated with Chesed and if we have to be Pone to the, to the Yamin. Um, and um, there's a big discussion then. Okay, well... Um, among the various uh, uh, approaches, the mainstream one, the one that Mishnah Brewer talks about is front, uh, which is, let's say, for our purposes, east, south, uh, west, north, up, down. But there are other traditions uh, that, that include, you know, uh, front, back, uh, 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 north, south, north. Uh, in the end, the Shulchan Aruch basically says, you know, whichever type of na'anuim you do, You'll be Yotze, but the Yaved, uh, according to all the Deot, but you should follow. Basically, we try to follow whatever minute we have. So, also, it is the Moli Chumevi. So, uh, there's a lot of discussion. It should be uh, Mevi, very close to yourself. Uh, how far the Moli is, I don't know. So, you extend your hand. But there's a big discussion also uh, if you do a snap, when you do a snap. And the Mr. Burra points out that people are doing these wild snaps. They're going to break their Lulu. Don't do that. It's not, not a good idea. It's a Taut, he writes. But when, we, when you do it, so, so uh, what I try to do when you extend it, it's a, that, that's when there's a little tiny shake. It doesn't have to actually literally snap, but the cascade it should be a little bit of a sound. Yeah. So it's, it's not just very slowly in and out, in and out, like uh, like some kind of dance step. It is also when you do it, there is some kind of a, of a sound that it's ought to make. It's as you run in like the trees of the forest are dancing. As we saw it in Tosfot last time. And I don't know if anyone noticed mm -hmm. since last week, three psukim in Hodula Hashem Kiru Vishmo that we say every day. From from Diver Hayamim, three psukim lined up. One, two, three. Number one, Azriana Kolat Seyar. Now the trees, then the trees of the forest will dance. Yeah. Next pasuk, Hodu Lashem Kito Kilm Chazdo. Next pasuk, Ve'imru Hoshienu Lekei Shenu Bekapsim Sinu, etc., etc. That's about Hodu and Hoshia are both there, and that's when we end up doing it. That's what Tosfot said. We learned that last time on 37b. We saw that inside. That's what those would say. Look at those three psukim. So you can reference that. And like, that's a good anchor in the sitter every single day. Wow, it's amazing. I can reference the notion of the Na'anuim. Yeah, connecting it, you know, on a, to, to a daily basis. Now, the last... You just push it out and bring it in without shaking it. Is that Ma'akev? Uh, it's not clear that it's Ma'akev at all. But the recommendation is that when you push it out, it should sort of move. Uh, there is, there is, there is a, a, an idea also, some have, 
that you shake it as you're pushing it out. But again, you know, like everybody's going in different directions. So, um, you know, how do you, how do you uh, arrange? So this is a discussion. The one that goes down, does it mean take your lulav and point it down and aim it to the ground? Yes. Indeed, that's what the Ramah writes. But the Taz says, no, no, that's not a good idea. You should keep it upright because it has to be Derek Gidulan. The Ramah's defenders say, it is Derek Gidulan. You're holding it in your hand. And the, that's where it's attached to the tree. That's where the twigs and the branch of the lulav was attached to the tree. Derek Gidulan means the way that it grows means that the part that's attached to the terra firma is uh, underneath you. I in a tree, the etrog is actually hanging upside down, obvious. But uh, but nonetheless, I'm getting a signal here. Please, the question. Yeah, sorry. Um, I'll try to do that moving forward. Sorry about that, Larry. I have to repeat questions that people ask. So, um, you know, that's, and our minig is not to turn it upside down. We keep it uh, uh, upright the whole time, but uh, we're meant to lean it in each of the directions. Uh, the Ramah also says, uh, Mr. Brewer, rather, you don't have to move your whole body. In other words, if you're going to the, to the side, you don't have to turn completely your body. You can just lean it in that direction, you know, do it over your shoulder, et cetera. Um, it doesn't have to be with turning around per se. Anyway, um, okay. So that's um, that's as far as that. One other thing I want to say about Nuim, which is somewhat practical as well, it's a year away, but why not, is that even though we talked a lot about the bundling of three species, the etrog should be held together, touching it. Mm -hmm. right. um, yeah. The bear, I think it is, there in the Shulchan Aruch and Tafrish and Alf, has an extremely strange story about the Beit Yosef that he had an Ashkenazi who came to visit him named Harav Yitzchak doesn't say his last name and um, he had a dream about him the night he came and in the dream Rav Yitzchak was writing out the name of Hashem Yud uh, K Vav and he left a long space and then he wrote a letter hey so he didn't know what this dream was about and he in the dream so goes the story he uh it's quoted by the Beit Yosef I don't know if it happened to the Beit Yosef actually I think he quotes the Rikanti there also he, he said to him, this is wrong. You're not allowed to write three letters and another letter away. You have to write them together. So he, uh, he somehow either erased the letter or he, he, he protested. He told him that's wrong. You have to put the letters close enough so they look like a word. Okay, he wakes up. He has no idea what the dream is about. There are very few of these stories that I've come across in Shas you know, and Poskin like this. But, and and they, it was Sukkot, first day of Sukkot. And he saw this Rav Yitzchak picked up his lulav bundle in one hand and he held his etrog over here. And he went over to him and he said, oh, now I know what my dream was about. You have to put them together. There are all sorts of midrashim that there's four species, about the four letters of Hashem's name. This only ace like Benis Starot, but it's it's actually repeated in the, not in the Mishnah, but on top there in the Bear Hate. So, so there's an Indian now. There's an Indian that should really be with two hands. That's where it gets very clumsy to try to do it while you have your sitter. So for the Hodus and the Anah Hashem Shia, that's not hard. For the Hoshanas, so if you can balance a little bit good, and if for part of it, you're holding it all in one hand, uh, Loni Raj is so far along. But the main thing is not to hold it in two hands. You see that sometimes in Shul. It's a guy holding two hands, holding it like two trophies. Uh-uh, they're supposed to be touching. The more important thing is the touching more than the two hands, but ideally two hands as well. Okay, segue to the new part now. This was kind of background, just giving you some practical material. Now the bottom line, literally the bottom line, Lam Zayin of Bet is um, uh, second last line. Amr Rabbi Yosei Bar Avin Ve'Item Rabbi Yosei Bar Zavila. This is a reaction to the last. Actually, I started too late. I'm sorry. Four lines up from the bottom, just to remind you, there were two opinions about why we're moving in all directions. One of them was to acknowledge that Hashem controls the four winds, as well as the the the, the vertical, the horizontal and the vertical. The second opinion was to prevent bad wind and bad uh, 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 rain, i.e. it's a form of prayer. We're asking Hashem to, to help us, to save us from calamity. So that second one, Amr, the second to last line now, the Gemara is the second to last line on 37b, Amr Biyosi, Bar Avin, Bar Biyosi, Bar Zavila, Zot Amerit, Shiyare Mitzvah Ma'ak, Puranut. We see here that even the part of the mitzvah that is not the mainstay of the mitzvah, it's a sidebar, it's an additional element. Uh, um, uh, it's 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 what's left over in a way. It's like the add-on. So that's ma'ake that can stop calamity from happening. Shahare tnufa, shiari mitzvahi, vilt seret ruchot utalalim raim. And we see that um, indeed tnufa generally waving of uh, korbanot 
is considered a, 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 a you know sort of a, an appurtenance that goes with the mitzvah. It's not the main part of the mitzvah, and yet it can stop uh, that which is calamitous, right? Uh, namely, uh, uh, winds that are damaging, uh, rains and precipitation that's damaging. Um, and uh, w- what is being referenced here? If you look at Rashi, he gives us a window into it. Some of us might remember it from when we learn Masachet Yuma. He's also referenced to that top of the right uh, right hand side of the daf. Shiari mitzvah, mitzvah shehi shirayim, she'ena ikar le'akev kapara, hafal pichain tshuva hi la'akev et apuranut. Chashuva hi, excuse me, chashuva hi la'akev et apuranut. Right. So what what does it mean? We learn here that there's an element here of the waving that transpires, and we're going to wave the lulav. But the Gemara here is referencing the waving actually of various korbanot, particularly the one we referenced previously, if you look on 37b, was from Shmot chapter 29, the story of the Miluim, the inaugural process of the Kohanim, Aaron and his four sons, as in prospect, it was saying what was going to happen, not when they did it, but what was going to happen. And it mentions the raising up and the waving of the various korbanot, various parts, the chazeh, the shok, to lift it and wave it. But the Gemara there on Hayam and Aleph, and that's really, oh, well, look at it. Look at the next um, next Mishnah, next to Rashi, excuse me. But the point is, even the appurtenance is significant, even though it's not the mainstay of the mitzvah. In other words, the waving is not the main part of the korbanot that are given. The main thing about a korban is to be makri of the korban. How are you makri of a korban? You take the blood and put it on the mizbeach, right? The follow through is the emurim, but the main thing is actually the dam. So Rashi, second Rashi. Uh, a second line, Shari Tnufa Shiari Mitzvahi, Ve'ena Ma'akavet. In other words, if you didn't do it, it's not essential for achieving kapara through the various korbanot. Again, the model on Yuma, Daf Hamad Aleph, happens to be related specifically to the Yemei Hamiluim, the inauguration. Gidatani Vitorat Konim, Maitinin Laba Gemara, the Yuma. We find this both in the Medrash Halacha for Sefer Vayikra, that's called Torah Konim, and also in the Gemara of Yuma, Daf He. Litnufa Lechaper. I use the expression for waving in order to atone. That's the Pasuk, actually. Is the waving actually bringing atonement? First of the narrow lines. I, it's only blood that brings the atonement. Uh, so the point is, no. If you did it uh, uh, for the, the tnufa, and uh, meaning here, you didn't take care of it, but you left it on the side. So the, the scripture accords it as if you didn't do the mitzvah in the most perfect or pristine or choicest manner. But it says, uh, yet in that passage, it also refers to meaning, and it atones. Nonetheless, kiper, shein tzarek, lavi korban, you don't have to start bringing another korban if, they, if it was forgotten to do the, uh, the tnufa. So now go back to the Gemara. Third line of the Gemara, the Amar, second word, the Amar Rava, the Chain Belulav. It's true also for the Lulav. Back to Rashi, flip again back to the Rashi column, six lines down or so from in the narrow lines, the Chain Lulav, Molichum Evi, Male Umorid. The fact that an individual is uh, moving it around, uh, that in and of itself is not the Ikuva to fulfill the mitzvah of the Dalad Mina. Meaning, if a person never did not knew him, and they just made the bracha and picked it up. Your yod the mitzvah, lukach tam lachem, right? Pre eats a dark, a potsam rim, a foot, an office of That's what you have to do, pick it up. The moving around is a, considered a shiari mitzvah. Mm-hmm. I think I said it last time, but in case I forgot, very, very important because I'm following the thread as someone who likes to uh, 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 deal in the world of drush. Uh, you notice again, it's a comparison between the lulav and a korba. Again, yeah. again, yeah. An element of avoda with ritzui and uh, uh, the comparisons in uh, mitzvah babaveira. There's so many, so many examples. Here's yet another one, and the model is, by the by, the na'anuim are not liikuva, uh, just like the tenufa of the korban is not liikuva. What's amazing, though, and I'll, the last thing I'll say, I'll take your question, Art. It's Tosfo at that point out a beautiful pasuk from Sefer Diver Hayamim, mm-hmm. which is also found in Sefer Tehillim. Az Yiranu Kolatze Yar. Then in the Messianic era, the trees of the forest will be rejoicing. They'll be dancing around. Yeah. Uh, why wasn't that quoted in the Gemara here? Because that's a Messianic vision of the Lulav as a representation of the world of uh, flora, of, 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 of trees, of vegetation. 
and what's going to be in the future. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. But the halachic component of na'nuim is not taken from there. The halachic component of na'nuim comes from the world davka of inauguration of kohanim to serve Hashem in the mikdash. With what objects? Objects that are nikravim. They're, they're offered as, as korbanot. So just something to think about. Okay, art first, and then I'll see if anyone's on the phone with questions. Yeah, yeah it wasn't a question. It was oh. a comment that if, if, if the non-Uim at all are not Ma'akiv, then Kalva Homer, my question before about the shaking, um, yeah. you know, then yeah. same thing. Yeah, but the question is, is there, uh, it's not the Ikuva, but is there a mitzvah in a Muvchar to do the non-Uim? And if there is, which sounds like there is, it's a Shiari mitzvah. Yeah, yeah. So how do you do it like in the choicest way possible? So what's 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 the tradition? Like that's that's the idea, you know. But you're yeah, you're right. When push comes to shove, you could hardly say, oh, that person wasn't kind of So I remind you again, I pointed out uh, um, based on the rav from the the Rishimo Chiurim of the rav of Rav Soloveitchik on Masachat Sukkah, we saw that there was a chiluk. The Bali Tosfot thought there are two different things. You make a brach on the lulav, you pick it up, and then there's another thing called davening halal, the tefillah of halal, where the not him take place. And their proof was the cut on Hayudel and Nanea. We're going to come to it in 42A shortly, in a few months probably. Um, oh, I'm being realistic. Uh, uh, is that that child doesn't know how to, if the child knew how to read and do halal, so they're probably older and it's obvious. No, the point is they're cutting that just knows how to make it move and, and make the brach, in other words, but they don't necessarily read halal. Yeah, but it's good enough. Rambam thought that the two are integrally related. I don't think, though, the Rambam would argue that the lack of proper not new it means you weren't fulfilling the mitzvah i just can't imagine mm -hmm. that based on all this is the gemara is calling the shiari mitzvah and comparing it to the tenufa and saying no uh, it's just criticizing you if you didn't do the tenufa the waving but no one's going to see it and fulfill the mitzvah okay um did you hear that on the phone you did hear yes ronnie yeah sort of okay good okay it was a comment not a question now fill out filling out the gemara now here, we'll finish to the Mishnah, and then we'll actually start the new Mishnah, because it's a, a nice sugya coming up as well. Uh, uh, end of the third line. Rav Acha Bar Yaakov, Mantile uh, Umaitile. Uh, he would uh, send it out and bring it back. Moluch Mevi, same thing. Amar, he would say, he would declare when he did this, Dingira Be'ene de Sitna. This is uh, uh, like a, 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 an arrow in the eye of the, of the Satan. Uh, Rashi points out right away, the satan can see and sees with its eyes that we are doing the mitzvah and it does not have the power to wipe away to wipe us away from or remove us from disconnect us from this dislodge us would be the best word i think from the from the, the, the from the yoke of mitzvot but the gemara criticizes uh, Rav uh, Acha Bar Yaakov, uh, Velav Miltehi. That's that's not something you should be doing. Mishum Daatili Guriye Be, because you're only provoking the uh, the Yitz, the the uh, the Satan. So now look at look at Rashi. Rashi gives us a window into a deeper understanding of this. If you want to understand it on the basic of shot, something metaphysical. That's fine. Rashi reaches to something else. Liguriye. It's not a good idea. She Garab, because what are you going to do? You're provoking it that it will come after you. What's that? She Garabo Satan. Shehu Yetzer Hara. This is not made up by Rashi. This is the, the, the memra of Rish Lakish and Gemara and Baba Batra, but I think it's an important one. Uh, the Satan means the Yetzer Hara, your evil inclination. Shevyasiyanu, litot me'al kono, that cause you to wander, to stray from your creator. Vim sorat small adavar, and Yetzer Hara will work very hard. Now, I guess if this was like a Madras class, we could spend some time figuring out what exactly is it about the waving, you know, but I would say it's a unique experience and has a tr an air of celebration to it, uh, jubilation and triumph uh, when one is waving it around because the culmination of Roshana Yom Kippur and here we are Sukkot the first day, you know, and uh, the point is uh, uh, don't, don't tempt your Yetzir Hara uh, to think like, what, what am I doing over here as a waste of my time or something, which would be a big problem. Do not, so don't, so don't say things, ha ha ha. I'm better than you know. I can. I'm beating my Yates Sahara. I'm beating the Satan. Meaning the the Satan here means the Yates Sahara. It's interesting that Rashi is using the same word here that Baba uses in the Ganeidim. Yeah. Oh, 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 you're right. You're right. I don't know if it's Hishiani or. Can you repeat that question? Yeah. I, uh, Arthur Arthur just pointed out mm -hmm. that it seems to be the language of Chava Im Kolchai. Uh, that that the, the she says 
Anachash, hishiani va'ochal. I thought this word was v'yasienu litot. It will it will carry him away. Uh, uh, but maybe you're right, Arthur. I I'm not sure. Any grammarians with us? Benny, you want to weigh in? V'yasienu, v'yasienu. I don't know. Judah. We we don't use. You think it's sin? Okay, the vote for Benny is uh, with with Arthur. We'll go with that. The point is. Uh, uh, don't 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 be a show off is, is the idea, and it's a great time to be a show off. You're waving stuff around. It's a mitzvah. We're winning. We we you know. There's midrash that describe that the the um the the the, the dalin minim is some kind of trophy almost like we were zakai badin, so we carry a, a triumph. It's like instead of a wreath, it happens to be elongated. We're carrying. Kind of, you can picture someone with like the torch or something. you know, running down the street. So we're carrying it, and it's a sign that we've emerged victorious a sense of confidence that we emerged victorious, so to speak, and had a good, you know, chatimat hadin, that's our quiet confidence. But if it's not so quiet because you're waving it around, so at what point does it become like an act of hubris? And that's bad because it's bringing you away from a Kaddish Baruch. It's interesting. Okay, I'll save the rest of that for a drush. There's more to say. Let's go to the, but we'll stop there. Okay, I see eyes glazing over over here, getting a little too drushy. Mishnah. Misha Baba Derech. There's another, now, sorry, what's this Mishnah's relation to the last Mishnah? The last Mishnah was the not Nuim themselves, so the action one takes. Everything before that, having to do with Dalad Minim, was the status of the Dalad Minim. And then from there, we transitioned into the lifting of the Dalad Minim. That's what we're talking about, Aguda, not Aguda. We're talking about the number of species we needed. Now, then we dealt with not Nuim, the waving. Now we're up to, you arrived, and you hadn't yet taken care, haven't yet taken care of the mitzvah, and it's during the day of Sukkot. Which day of Sukkot? That's part of the discussion of the Gemara. Mishabah Badarah. Person came from a journey. And they did not have their lulav with them when they traveled. When they come to their house, they should, they should when they come to their house, they should uh, uh, take it uh, 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 on their table, meaning they should do it right away. What's Al Shulchano Rashi points out. He told Al Shulchano, Im Shachach Velonatal, called him Achila. If you forgot, you came in from outside, you haven't taken the lulav, and you start your meal, which meal? That's one of the questions, of course, as well. Um, and you remembered, you have to stop the meal and go take the lulav immediately in the middle of the meal. Okay, but the Gemara goes on. The Mishnah, rather, goes on. If you didn't take it in the morning, you can take it in the afternoon. Because the whole day, is kosher in order to fulfill the mitzvah of lulav anytime during the day. Doesn't that uh, raise the question? If you're that, you have to say halal in shacharis and you use a lulav and esro during halal. So why How would did you it forget? Be? Hmm? How did you forget? Right. I don't know. The point yeah. is, this person seems to have been traveling and they had to recite halal maybe without the lulav and esro. Yeah. I mean, if God forbid someone was in a hospital and they didn't have a dollar meeting with them or something, still say hollow. Wait a second. What? Also oh, oh, hold on, hold on. Or, or you have to come back home and you have to do it at home at any time during the day. It is any time during the day. The problem is that here, hollow is not mentioned. It only speaks about Natila and not about Nanuim. Didn't we just say that Nanuim is night? I mean, I don't want to say night. It's not nice. Part of the mitzvah. But it's not lihikuva. It's not. It's not so, essential. So, right. Right. And my point is, it used the word yitol about picking up the lulav. That's that's my point. Yeah. That's, that's you could do hala later on, but the point is, you didn't even pick it up, so you don't have the mitzvah, the main mitzvah. You didn't do. Yeah. Oh, so that's going to be part of the discussion of the gemara. Right. It, what day of yantif is this? What meal is this? There are two parts here to the Mishnah. Let's analyze a little bit before we go to the Gemara. We'll be the uh, we'll pretend to sit in the place that we're wrong. We're not really sitting in the place that we're wrong, obviously. But um, right, part one: someone who was away and arrived and did not have a lulav with them when they traveled, so they should take it when they get home, and uh, they should take it upon their table, which, according to Rashi, means. Not that you leave it on your table, but that you do not sit down to eat a meal before you take it. The second part of the Mishnah is, if you didn't do this in the morning, then you could do it in the afternoon, because the whole day is kosher for lulav. 
Okay, wait, but what, what about the, again, the first part? The first part said, even if you're in the middle of a meal, you have to stop. Well, what if the meal is a meal early in the day? Shachari time. Now, people in the olden days, don't forget, didn't really eat breakfast, but they had a break fast. Some point, today we would call that like lunch. And uh, the day's not going to end until, I don't know, we're making up a time, 7.22 p.m. So you're sitting at 12 o'clock. Kol yom kosher. I mean, how long are you going to eat? I mean, really, you, the field's going to go from 12 to... Okay, if it's 7 o'clock and you're sitting down to have a meal, which has its own halachic problems because you're not supposed to have a meal before the second day, but it doesn't smear in Eretz Yisrael, so it's only one day, so, right? Okay, whatever it is. So you're running out of time. So, okay, so now you kind of have to stop. Francie, what do you think? So, my question is, you should take the rule off, okay? You say how long at that point again? That, 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 that's, 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 that's my, that's why I brought it up as you don't have to take it again. You said halal already. You can't just make a brach on how, in other words, so the, so, so halal counts. Yeah. Yeah. How long does the whole thing take? 20 seconds? It's Rabbi. Uh, yeah. Judah. When it says he told, that's what we're saying in the Right. And that, that's why I was harping on it and it was being pointed out correctly. You could say hal the whole day, but let's assume you already said hal. Do you have to go back and say hal? No, we just finished learning. It's a Shiari Mitzvah. It's not Lee Kuva. The not knew him, so he didn't, he couldn't do it. I mean, really, you should do it. But if you didn't, say say the bracha of hal, brachas, it's two brachas, a beginning and an end. You're just going to say brachas? There's a bracha of a tali, you don't do that. So there's a whole, you know, and, and the two parts of this Mishnah, this is the discussion, is what exactly is the case? So let's go in the Gemara, and we'll try to uh, uh, unpack it a little bit. Amrat notlo al sulchano. You use the expression, take it upon your table. Lememra, uh, uh, meaning to say, demafsik, you should stop eating. As we will now see, when we open up the next uh, Gemara, this is a headquarters Gemara for the Ramban's argument against the Ramban about the mitzvah of tefillah. You'll see it. It's about to come. I'm giving you coming attractions. So it'll, it'll hit you. Oh, man. Uraminhi. There's a contradiction here. The contradiction is from the Gemara Masechet Shabbat. The Gemara Masechet Shabbat says, Im hitchilu If they started, meaning if they started eating, we do not stop them. Do not stop them from what? Without Rashi, we'd have to go looking for the Gemara. We could just look at Rashi. First Rashi in the Gemara. Im hitchilu in mafsikin. Gabay tefillah hamincha. Sorry, period. This is said with regard to Mincha. We learn about this in Masachat Shabbat and Daftat, I'm a bet. A person should not sit down at the barber in the barber's chair, nor should they, it was a big production in the olden days, certainly, and they should not um, uh, uh, go in to either eat a meal or to judgment, to judge a case uh, in mincha time. As soon as it's time for mincha, mincha gedola, stop, go take care of mincha. If you meet chilu, kodam mincha, if they started before the time for mincha arrived, umash chasudatan, but the meal took a longer period of time, v'yigiyah zman mincha. so he started, let's say a perfect day, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., so 12 noon is exactly the chatzot, so 12.30 is the time for uh, earliest mincha. They started the judgment at 11.30 a.m., and it's still going at one in the afternoon. Do they have to stop that mincha immediately? No. Ain't mafsikin. Ain't tzrichin lahafsik siudat mulhipal enough to stop the meal or the judgment, whatever it is, uh, if they started before shat ha mincha. So, so gezunt. So look back now in the Gemara. The Gemara says, wait a minute. That's true. You're not allowed to pray mincha. You're not, excuse me. You are not allowed to continue your meal if you haven't yet taken the lulav. You have to stop the meal to pick up the lulav. So important to take the lulav. It's a mitzvah after all to do it. But mincha is not a mitzvah, mincha is a mitzvah. And yet it says if you started doing the, uh, the meal, let's take the meal as the example, because that's the, that's the comparison, right? That's the bridge, is meals in both kinds. You started your meal before mincha, now it's shot in mincha. You have to stop, you complete, complete the meal. That's, the, that's what the Gemara of Shabbat says. So now back to our Gemara, the Gemara says, well, that's a contradiction. So Amar of Safra, lo kashya. Rav Safra says there's no contradiction here. Ha de ika shehut bayom, ha de leka shehut bayom. One of these cases is a case where you have lots of time during the day. When do you have lots of time during the day? 
you started eating your meal at 11.30 a.m. And now it's 12.42. I mean, you're not going to eat all the way till 7 p.m. with one meal, probably, unless you're a glutton. So you're going to finish the meal before sunset and you'll be able to go take the lulav. Uh, right? You know, it's, 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 it's easy. Or in this case, I should have said, you'll have time to daven mincha, right? But in the other case, where is the case, says Rabbi uh, Safra, Rav Safra, he explains the Gemara, the Mishnah rather, when do you have to stop immediately? It's that you're sitting down to your late day meal and your late day meal started at, let's say, 5.30. Well, your meal is going to go for an hour. So that's going to be till after sunset. So don't, you can't wait a second. You have to get up right now and do it. You don't have time. You're going to run out of time. The sand is running through the hourglass. Follow? And he derives this from the fact that in Masachat Shabbat, it said, if you start, you don't have to stop. And the assumption is you started before Chatzot uh, or before, before Shat HaMincha. In the, uh, this case, since the, 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 the way it started is, you came, so then you have to take it even more important than eating your meal. If you're in the middle of your meal, stop immediately. That's Rav Safra's solution. You see from the fact that there's more Gemara that not everybody liked this solution. They thought it was kind of forced and arbitrary that you attached. Ooh. Here there's a little and here there's not a little time. You know, like, huh? It's a little cheaper. Like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, time, obviously, to do it, right? Yeah, it stands to reason. Like, that's a chiddush? Yeah, it's common sense. Like, the, 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 the Gemara is not coming to tell us common sense. We, we know that already. We have the, that's why it's called common. Unless the word is that you're going to forget. Yeah, unless the word you're going to forget. Unless. Wait. I mean, Mincha, you don't necessarily, there's a little bit I can see people forgetting a lot more than Mincha. You don't How come? Every single day. Oh, that's a great, great answer. We're going to see a us what actually has an answer like that, that maybe there's a chiluk to me between the two of them about the level of frequency, how much it's in your mind, you know? Your time consciousness is associated much more with tefillah than with a mitzvah. That's a few days of the year and pick it up, put it down. It's not associated with the time, daytime, anytime during the day. Yeah. Okay. So, so let, let's see. Let's see the Gemara. So, uh, so I'm a Rava, my kushia. What, what exactly Rava basically asked, like, what kind of, uh, what kind of question is this here? Dilma had oraita had Maybe the chiluk says Rava is that the mitzvah of lulav is the oraita. And the mitzvah of mincha is only the Rabbanan. The Ramban said, this is my proof. Mincha and sha- davening is only the Rabbanan. He agreed that is a concept of tefillah de oraita in an eight sara. He took this from the, the uh, Torah's uh, 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 parsha, uh, having to do with the chatzotzrot, varotem uh, chatzotzrot, kitavo, I don't know, I shouldn't cut, butcher it. I'm going to stop there. It's Batsarat Sureratchem. Yeah, the, the Parsha and Parsha Balotcha, yeah. but we shouldn't quote Mikra off by heart. I'm trying to be more Makbit on that this new year so far. So far, so bad, but I'm trying. Mm-hmm. I'm not doing a good job. But right, so we learn about that for the Rambam, Ramban. But the Ramban says daily prayer. That's the Rabbanan. The Rambam says, What are you talking about? It's every single day. Uh, every single day. The Ramban says, doesn't say a time. It says, No, no, yeah, it's, it's for sure do right. So, so here the Ramban said, yeah, did you see the Gemara here? Rambam, did you learn the Gemara? So the Kesef Mishnah and various others say, ah, no, no. The Rambam holds as a mitzvah to daven every day. But how many times you daven every day and what you say, all of that's the Rabbanan. But that there is a mitzvah to pray daily, that's the Oraita. And uh, there's Machloket, Rambam and Ramban. So it's, it's squaring off on this. This is like one of the proof texts. They call it the Rabbanon here. Yeah, it's the Rabbanon when you pray. The fact is, and by the by, Mincha. How do you know Mincha is definitely the Rabbanon? Because you already daven Shachras, presumably. He's talking about Mincha here. So the point is, like, yeah, it's the Rabbanon. It's not, not you know, not, not, not the Oraita. Okay. The, the, the Ramban wasn't impressed by that. The Ramban thought, well, that's either here nor there, because the reality is that if you look carefully at the beginning of the Mishnah here, it didn't actually say what time of day it was. I don't know. Still could be Shachar's time, maybe. Anyway, continuing. El Amar Rava Rava had another answer, not Rav Safra's answer. Ikashya Hakashya. If if there is a question, uh, uh, then then here is the question. Uh, when he comes into his home. When he arrives there, uh, uh, then uh, he should uh, he should take it 
right there, then and there, right? So that would have been enough. It's so important. But what happened next in the Mishnah? Alama, Alma, the Mafsik, Vahadr Tani, but then what does it say? Lonatal Shachri, Ito Ben Arbayim. Right? So if you didn't take in the morning, you should take in the afternoon. Alma Lo Mafsik. How come in the, in, the, in, the, in the morning you, uh, excuse me, if you didn't take it in the morning at all, you could just do it in the afternoon because you have a lot of time. But in the more, but, but in the first case, in the Mishnah, <clears throat> you came and you should take it even more important than your meal, must be referring to where you don't have enough time left, you're going to run out of time. It was, Rav said, if you really want your question of Safra, here's how you have to ask it. The fact is that the Mishnah itself gives you two separate statements. Statement one is, Lulav supersedes the need to eat a meal. And if you're in the middle of a meal, stop. Second statement is, if you didn't do it in Shacharit, hey, don't worry, you, already have, you still have the whole afternoon. So if you, you still have the whole afternoon means you have a lot of time left. Ergo, the first statement is, you don't have a lot of time left. Dinner, dinner. Yeah, you're coming to the end of the day. Mark, please. I, I, I see these as two entirely separate things. If you're traveling, first of all, he's traveling. Right. And, and the Rashi says, if he forgets, I think is what he said, right? In, in, in Shakar, right? So he forgot. Yeah. Him. Yeah. So I think before he ate, before he ate. No, no. Forget eating from him. Im Shakar Vula Natal, Kota Machila. The Mishnah says if he's on, if he's traveling and, then he, then he, and he's in there with Lula, and he should take it right away when he comes in the house. Right. Okay. So meaning you forgot your Lula, and now you have to take it, boom, right away. Because if you already forgot it, the mission is telling you, don't wait anymore the minute you come in, including if you're sitting to eat and you haven't eaten because you've been traveling. Take it right away. Yeah. The second is entirely separate, in my mind, an entirely separate piece, which is for whatever reason you didn't do it chakra, you still have all day. But it's a different case. One is you actually forgot and you've been traveling in the mission. Well, when you say the word forgot, though, you mean for, you forgot he the. Forgot his lula. No, but no, no, no. You're already enough. This right. You forgot to take it before you already started eating. Now you're in the middle of the meal. I'm back in the first line of the mission. Yeah, Mishibaba Right, but it's not that you forgot the lulav; it's that you didn't have the lulav for whatever reason. Right. Now you came. Right. No, but it's not that he didn't forgot it. So he was traveling somewhere. And he arrived, and he didn't. Had no, there was no way for him to have a lulav where he was. Okay. So if you look at Rashi, that's the point. Rashi, Dibur Manchil, Yitol Al Shulchano. So Rashi says, what do the three words, he shall take it upon his table, answer if he forgot and didn't take it before he ate. Then he has to stop his meal, and he has to take the lulav. Right. So I took that as a paradox, not as a specific. Okay, okay, yeah, sure. Meaning, it's so important. It's still, it's still the same philosophy, which is, you didn't do it. You put yourself in a situation. Now, don't assume you're going to remember after you've had a meal and a cup of coffee and you've taken a nap and showered. You're going to come back you're and say, hey, I got to take it. Right away. Yeah, yeah, fine. The second piece to me is chakri. Like, you didn't get a chance to do it in chakri for whatever reason. You have the whole day to do it. <clears throat> to me, they're two separate cases. Okay. I mean, I realize I'm I, No, 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 no. You're not, you're not, you're not wrong. That, that, that's what they're, that's what they're debating. In other words, in other words, the fact that it said not lo shulchano, that's what everyone's trying to understand in the Gemara as well. What does that actually mean? So we're saying, well, wait a second, when it comes to mincha, if you're, you shouldn't start a meal before mincha time, uh, once mincha time arrives rather, but if you start it before mincha time arrives and you're still eating and mincha time arrives, you don't have to stop your meal dava mincha. Why not? Maybe you're going to forget. No, because you have a lot. So Rav Safra said, no, you have a lot of time. And the case of the Mishnah must be where you don't have a lot of time. So the Rav said, that's, I mean, that's how you just want to answer it. You haven't accommodated, you haven't accounted for what you're saying, which is all things being equal. If you read it sort of in chronological order, it's like statement, here's the paradigm of what you should do. But if you didn't do that, then stage two, here's what you need to do. Right. But Rava says, no, I think there's a chronology here. And the chronology is, the fact is that generally speaking, and that's why when you read it in, he says, I want to take care of the fact there are two parts of this Mishnah. Because only the second part is about like, oh, it's you didn't do it in the morning. Well, you have the afternoon. The first part is you're in the middle of the meal. You have to stop immediately. Why don't you just say, well, you have the whole afternoon. If the first part of the Mishnah wasn't there, wouldn't we understand you didn't take it in the, if you didn't take it in the morning, 
then you can take it in the afternoon. Does that mean that you should take it in the morning? You should take it in the morning. You didn't do it, you're doing it in the afternoon. You're running out of time, you have 10 minutes left. Of course you have to take it now. But there's another statement before that that says, if you came from a trip and you arrived and you hadn't taken it yet and you started your meal, you have to stop and you have to take it right away. Right. Without a time vector. It doesn't say what time of day it is. Why not? Right, but, okay, I, where, but where I'm, I'm, I'm pushing back a little bit is yeah. the first case is not he's in the middle of a meal. It's he travels and arrives somewhere and now he's eating. As opposed to like, I'm sitting at home and I'm having one of my seven meals a day, right? Because, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot to lula. You know, I can say, oh, well, I got all afternoon. That right. to me is the second case. The first case is that you're traveling without it. Ah, the fact that you were traveling, you already didn't have it at me, all. To me, indicates mm. a different sense of urgency to not worry about the meal. I think the second case would be, you know, if I'm eating brunch at 10 o'clock, yeah. I'm like, oh, wow, you know, I forgot to do it. Interesting. I kind of have day. Interesting. The travel to me, because even- Do you think the traveling is like a chief component here? Well- traveling or any other reason why you didn't have to set up the meal. Correct, correct, correct. But it's not a case of you forgot. It's a case of you, it wasn't available. You didn't have the opportunity. So when you have the opportunity, you should be along with you on the journey. I would actually look, I would look. For whatever reason, you couldn't. It wasn't available. I tried to look at, to see if I could, I didn't have enough time. But I tried to look to see if, if, he, if it was a better paradigm for fulfillment than mental. Because you also have all day for that. You also have all day for that, but also if you were if you didn't have an availability to put on your tefillin in the morning because you were doing something, the question would be then when you get somewhere where there's tefillin, do you have to do it right away? To me, that was a better paradigm than minimum. Interesting. And I did I couldn't find an example. I didn't spend a lot of time at it because I fell asleep. But well, it happens. But had I not fallen asleep. I I so 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 listen. What you're saying is good and right. Um, you're, 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 ha you're onto something here and why wasn't tefillin used instead of using mincha right. mincha is the Rabbanan at least according to this Gemara is the Rabbanan so the mincha is the Rabbanan what's lulav the oraita. So and that's actually coming up that's the next thing in the Gemara is that comparison words, Rav Safar tried to solve the problem why did it say you have to stop your meal in the middle Pro the, the problem was that in the world of mincha uh, which is considered the it says here it's like the Rabbanan, that's, that's the first answer. You know, if you want to answer it still right to the Rabbanan, that's not going to be a good answer because Rav says there's something else you have to deal with. There are two parts of the Mishnah. And actually what Rosafter is answering, he thinks, is the two parts of the Mishnah. And the first part of the Mishnah is you're out of time. The second part of the Mishnah is you have some time. What you're adding is the element that you had been traveling and you didn't do it until now because you weren't even there. It's not like you were lazy. You just weren't there. Now you have the opportunity. What do you do with that? So that's like another question which we won't get to tonight, unfortunately, but it's in, it's in toast foot, et cetera. So um, I'm also mindful of the time. Um, I'm feeling stuck as usual. Let's at least finish uh, a couple more lines without going into toast foot. Okay, by common consent, because next week is no shear. Next week, no shear. Resuming November 1st at 7 p.m. 7 p.m., 7 p.m., 7 p.m. November 1st, 7. Here, here, unless we're back in the main building, but assume, let's assume we're here. I don't think we will be. Let's assume we're here, unless you hear otherwise. Uh, if you're on Zoom, then you're on Zoom. Same same time, same channel. So it's not same time. Eight, seven o'clock, same channel. Okay, let's go back. So there's parts to the Gemara. The Gemara first, again, the Gemara said, Not lal shulchano. wait a minute, that sounds like you have to stop your meal. But what do we do with the fact that Masechet Shabbat says, if you started uh, uh, your, your meal before Mincha, we don't stop you. So if Safi said, don't worry, the distinction between these two, this is the point. If Safi said, the following words. Just listen literally to the words. The difference between these two is over here you have time, over there you don't have time. So Rava said, you think that that means the context of Mincha and the context of Lulav? No way. You know why? Because Mincha is the Rabbanan and Lulav is the Oraita. But you know what Rav Safra meant when he said, here you have time and there you don't have time? The here and the there are the two parts of our Mishnah right here in front of us. That's what Rav Safra meant. So this is like a reconstruction. Rav is saying, it can't be so. I'm just, I'm making a landing. I did it. We did this already. It's a review. I'm starting from the beginning of the Gemara. Amrat, you say, it says in the Mishnah, notlo al-sulchano. You take it upon your table. Lememra, the mafsik. 
That makes it sound like you have to stop immediately, Uraminhi, but that contradicts something we learn elsewhere, which is Im Hitchilu in Mapsikin. If you start eating the meal before Mincha time, we don't make you stop during Mincha time uh, for it to Davin Mincha. So Amar of Safra and Rav Safra had said about this, this, whatever the this is, Lokasha Hadika shoot beyond. In this case, there is more time in the day. In this case, there is no more time in the day. Amarava, my kushia. What exactly is the question here? Dilma, hado oraita, hado rabanan. I mean, you want to just say, like, what, what's really the question here? This one is a context of the doraita called lulav. That's the context of the rabanan, namely mincha. El amarava, rava says, ikasya hakasya. This is the question. When the Mishnah says the following, First, it says, uh, if, you, um, if you came into your house, you take it upon your, your table, meaning, therefore, you have to interrupt your meal. But then it continued in the Mishnah, it said, If you didn't do it in the morning, he told Ben Harabayim, Therefore, you don't have to stop. Rav Safra, Rav Safra said, now this is Rava, Reading the words of Rav Safra, Rav Safra said, "Lo kasha." There is no contradiction here within the Mishnah itself. Hadika shehut biyom. This one, meaning the second case, is we have more time in the day. Ha the lake shehut biyom, where you don't have the quest, the, the time in the day. I'm Rabbi Zera, my kushia. Dilma mifsa mitzvah la suki vilu a pasik yitol bein har bayim shekol ayom kasha lo lulav. I mean, wait a second. I, I don't understand. Do you want to argue? What's the question here? Are you claiming that it's a mitzvah you have to stop immediately? Uh, and, and if you didn't stop, then you should just take it in the afternoon because the whole day is kosher. No, it's like a lechatchila and a bidiyabad. Is that it? No, no, no. It is as we originally understood it. The kashilach, hada oraita, hada rabbanan. Hacha, biyomtov sheni de rabbanan askin. And Rabbi Zeyra says, Rava, I love your challenge of Rav Safra where you wanted to say, Come on, Rav Safra is not dealing with a story about Mincha, which is the Rabbanan, and Lul, which is the Oraita. You know why? Because he's not dealing with it. He's dealing with a case where it's Mincha, the Rabbanan, and Lul of the Rabbanan. It's Yom Tov Sheni. By the way, what's the proof that it's Yom Tov Sheni? Say some of them in Farshim, Rashi and others. I think Rashi is the one who says it. How could you be traveling on the first day of Sukkot? You were doing intercity travel on Sukkot? Why would that be? I mean, you can start making arguments about Pekuch Nafesh, Pekuch Shvuim. Come on. So what is said, you know, the point was, are you traveling? When do you travel? Cholomoyed. Oh, it's Cholomoyed, so you travel, yeah. Okay, that's their, that's their argument. So, so uh, th- that's one answer is, Yom Tov Shani Dera Bonan Askinan. Number two, Daikadami B'dikatane, Mishibah B'derach Vim Biyad Alulav, Yisak Gadach B'yom Tov Rishan, Mishari. Oh, it's right there in the Gemara. I thought it was in the, in the uh, yeah. So how could it be that you're carrying it on the first day of Yom Tov, intercity travel, you can't travel into city anyway. I, I don't know why I thought that was in Rashi. I'm, I'm so uh, submished. Okay, so the, the point is, right, uh, uh, we're, 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 we're basically left with, okay, no, the comparison to Mincha was good. They're both the Rabbanan. One is Yom Tov Shani. The other one is Mincha, the Rabbanan. And the point is, you know, if you don't have enough time left, then you have to do it right away. But if you do have enough time left, fine. The Bali Tosa, which you will get to next time, start trying to parse why is that a distinction and what George said about Mincha being sort of on your mind is going to be a feature of part of that discussion. Anyway, we'll resume in two weeks. Hopefully, we will actually have some recollection of the Sukya. We're at Lama Chenamadalf. We're at the next Mishnah, but we'll we'll try to learn some Tosfatim and enrich our understanding a little bit more. Adkan. Bye, Lato.